Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this day four of our live lounge events. So this morning, I'm going to be talking to you about how you could get the most out of your GP consultation. So my name is Kate Williams. I'm a specialist nurse in Leeds in the community. I specialise, well, I'm a tissue viability nurse, so I specialise in wounds. Um, and I also work as a part-time lecturer at the University of Huddersfield. So I'm going to share my screen and then we're going to talk about how to get the most out of your consultation. Oops, excuse me, sorry. It's too early for me. I know it's nine o'clock, but here we go. This should work. It does help if you press the right button. Share. Lovely. So, right. How to get the most out of your GP consultation. So interestingly, on the news this morning, BBC, um, the one of the headlines was that GP practices are going to get a huge injection of funding to try and create more appointments, which I know is a particular bone of contention for people. Um, so in my personal life, I find it difficult to get appointments for my family. Um, it is really frustrating when you're ringing up and you're on hold for ages and then you get there and the appointments are all full and you have to ring back the next day. Um, so there are frustrations, I understand that, um, but there's also things we can do. So appointments are precious. They are so precious. Um, I think we all understand that. Um, things really changed at the start of COVID. So GPs were asked to shift mostly to remote consultations. So for a lot of practices that was, um, using video or telephone or cameras and pictures. So, but this is now changing. So now GP practices are moving back towards face-to-face -to -face appointments. But what you'll find is that a lot of them are using a bit of both. So they're using some face-to-face -face appointments, but they're also um, using a lot of phone calls, a lot of photography. Some practices might use videos just so that they can triage. So that, that just means deciding how important things are, they can triage appointments so that the pre the most precious appointment, which is the face-to-face -face with the GP, is given to the right person. So for your personal circumstances, it depends what your practice is actually doing. So the best thing to do, because it is changing, the best thing to do is either check on your GP practice's website or um, call in and ask the reception staff how it works, or you could ring up and ask them. OK, so find out what's going on in your individual practice because things are constantly changing. So does it need to be a GP? So does it need to be a doctor? Um, GP practices are very different places to what they used to be 20 years ago. So there's a whole host of clinical staff in a, working within a GP practice or in primary care, as we call it, um, who can help you with your lower leg problems. So this is just a few examples of who might work in a GP practice. Obviously a GP, trainee GPs who are still experienced doctors, but they're training to specialise in general practice. Um, paramedics, believe it or not, work in primary care or in GP practices now. So um, there's a big shift. So paramedics are used to triage urgency um, and they can assess any um, urgent conditions as they come into the um, GP practice. They won't look like paramedics. You won't walk in and they won't be all dressed in their green outfits, but there are paramedics working in primary care. So you might be given an appointment with somebody like that. There's advanced clinical practitioners. So these are usually nurses who've done advanced training so they can do more complex assessments. Then there's practice nurses, healthcare assistants sometimes are involved in wound care after an assessment. So you might be seen by a healthcare assistant further down the line. Um, pharmacists work in GP practices. They're unlikely, if I'm honest, to have much to do with wound care, but they will have a lot to do with your medications. And the medications you take, as you know, will be really important and could have a either positive or a negative impact on your legs. So pharmacists are a valuable, very valuable resource. And then, of course, there's the reception staff and the office staff. So behind the scenes, the office staff would be processing referrals on request to the um, clinicians. And then the receptionists are often the first people that you or I would come into contact with, usually on the phone. So we need to help the reception staff. The first job, bringing the GP practice. 
the receptionists have to ask you questions. They have to determine what the problem is and who you need to be put through to or who needs to ring you back. So I've tried to help you summarise a few things that you should say to help the receptionists get it right. Um, because they can only work on the information we give them. So we need to give them the, say the right words, give them the right information to help them make the right decision. So what is that? So I've got a few examples of what the problem might be. So if you ring up, you've got a wound on your foot. You must, must say if you're diabetic or if you have any loss of sensation in your feet, as that is much more urgent. Um, that must be the first thing you say. I'm a diabetic and I've got a wound on my foot and I know it's urgent. So that would really help them just streamline the process and get it right. So a new wound on your leg. So you need to say if it's not getting better, um, using the kind of standard phrases that we'd use in clinical world is that if it's not significantly improved in the last two weeks is what we'd um, want to get across. So basically you're telling the receptionist you've got a wound on your leg, it's not getting better, and you need to make an appointment with the nurse. So it's usually a nurse who would do a leg and a wound assessment. This isn't going to be the same day. Um, well, it might be, but it's highly unlikely it's not going to be the same day. So you can book an appointment to see the nurse. But in the meantime, you can go to your local pharmacist. So the pharmacists are really experienced clinicians. So this is the pharmacist within your local chemist, not the one in the GP practice. So your local pharmacist can advise you on simple dressings that you can get over the counter and then um, they can give you some advice on um, basic wound care. And that is until you get the appointment for a proper assessment with the nurse. So that's for new wounds. So if you've got a long standing wound on your leg, if you've been trying to manage this for yourself for quite some time, if you've been hiding it and not really wanting to tell anybody because you're a bit embarrassed, um, you need to ring up and you need to say how long it's been there um, and that you'll need an assess appointment with the nurse. Again, same situation as a new wound, but for these long-standing wounds, please tell them how long it's been there. Um, don't be embarrassed. Tell them if it smells. Tell them what, what's worrying you about it. But you need an appointment with the nurse because the longer these wounds are on your leg, the harder they will be to heal. Okay. So make it really clear to the receptionist how long it's been there. So other potential problems you might be ringing up about. So new leg swelling. So we need to get these words right. You need to say if it's painful and where the pain is. That's very significant. You need to say what or if anything makes the pain better or worse. So does it, is it worse when your leg's up? Is it worse when your leg's down? Um, is it worse when you walk? So what? What is there anything that makes it better or worse? Um, as regards the swelling, is it on one leg or is it on both legs? Um, all these, in, this is really critical information that the clinicians can use. Um, don't underestimate how important these bits are. So how far up your leg does the swelling go? Does it go up to your calf? Does it go up to your knee? Does it go up your thigh? Um, and do you feel more short of breath? So are you feeling out of puff as you walk around more than usual? So this can be quite serious and you might need to see a GP or a nurse practitioner the same day. So these are really important that you mention these things to the receptionists. Um, if you've got more long-standing swelling and you've finally plucked up the courage to try and get some help and do something about it, brilliant, well done. But the kind of things you need to say to the reception staff is whether it affects your ability to walk, um, how long have your legs been swollen and what have you already tried? So have you tried leg elevation and exercise and does it make a difference or not? Um, measure your ankle and your calf when they're at their biggest. So it's really obvious how swollen they are. So to me, a swollen leg could be one thing and to you it could be another. If you've lived with long-standing leg swelling for many, many months, your calf could be 50 centimetres. And if you ring the receptionist and say, I've got some swelling in my leg, the picture she's getting in her mind might be just of a, a tiny bit of ankle swelling. But if you say my calf is 50 centimetres, that will perk up more interest. So do measure your ankles and your calves and just make it clear how, um, how large they are when they're swollen. And do tell them if your legs are itching, 
tell them if they leak fluid and also tell them, is it affecting your daily life? Is it impacting your personal life, your relationships? Um, is it impacting on your ability to go to work? These things are really important and we need to get these things across because a busy receptionist might not think to ask those questions, but they are so, so important. Um, I've got in red across the bottom there because it's extremely important. You must always say if your leg or your foot is red, if it's hot, if it has an unpleasant smell or if you feel unwell or have a temperature. These things, red, hot, smelling, feeling unwell, got a temperature, you'll need seeing the same day. So these are real key things that you must say to the receptionist when you ring up. So photography. Clinicians use photography a lot to help them triage the patients, to, to help them decide how urgent it is and really what they need to do about it. This happened to me recently. I had an unusual mole on my leg. Um, I rang my GP and they asked me to send a picture. So this is quite normal now. So expect to be asked for a photograph. So you've got through to the receptionist. You've used the key words so they know who you need to be put through to or have a call from. And the next thing is they'll ask for a photograph. So because you're now going to expect this, if you don't have a smartphone or if you not, don't feel able to do it, get somebody to help you. Find somebody who can take the pictures on your phone so that you're ready when they say, can you send a photo? You've got one already. So if you don't have access to a smartphone, find somebody who does and get them to help you. Some GPs use video consultations on mobile phones and smartphones. But a lot of practices find that a really good quality photograph is better than a video. So a good quality picture alongside a phone conversation is sometimes better than a video for quality of images. So you might find that although video consultations are an option, some practices would prefer a good quality picture and a phone call. So what's a good quality picture? Um, these are good quality pictures. So you need to take a close up picture and then one much further away. So if that, that image on the right, if I just sent that picture, it could be anywhere. It could be the top of my leg, the bottom of my leg, it could be my ankle, it could be my thigh, it could be anywhere. They have no idea and we're really not helping the clinicians decide what to do. Whereas if you send both those images, they can see it's on the right leg, they can see it's on the um, front of the shin, in the middle of the leg, they can see the surrounding skin. And then on the close-up picture, they can see the kind of tissue that's within the wound. So all this information is really important to the clinician who's triaging your, um, appoint, your request for an appointment. So make sure the picture is clear. Don't send fuzzy images because it just really doesn't help. You might need to take 10 or 20 pictures and just pick the best ones. Um, make sure the light is good. And so we need to really help the clinicians get this right. So good quality pictures, clear, good light, one close up and one further away. Perfect. So just general tips on a face-to-face -face appointment. So because they are so precious, we've got to get it right. We have to get the absolute maximum out of these appointments. So when you do go in, resist the temptation to talk about other things. So talk about the problem, the reason you ran up. So in this case, your lower limb. So your leg or your foot problem. If you've got small children, try to get somebody to look after them so you're not distracted during your appointment. Um, I know myself from personal experience, taking small children to a doctor's is a nightmare if it's about if the appointment's about you. You've been in the waiting room for 20 minutes, the kids are whinging and whining, and you've not focused on what you're doing. And by the time you go in, you just want to go home. So if you've got small children, try to get somebody to mind them so you can really focus on that precious consultation with your clinician. Um, go suitably dressed. Um, you're going about a lower limb problem. You're gonna to need to get your legs out. So don't go with tights, socks, trousers, wellies, everything else, because you're gonna to have to get undressed. So go wearing something where you can have fairly quick access to your lower limbs, just to, so you're not spending half of the appointment getting dressed and undressed. Um, a big thing is to say what's really worrying you. Um, don't make chit chat about the weather or just try and don't dodge the real problem. 
if you're there about leg edema and it's really impacting on your relationships and your quality of life, just be brave and say it because the clinician needs to understand the impact this is having on your life. Um, it's not just a clinical assessment of a limb. They want to know about you. They want to know how you are, not just about your leg. So be brave and say what's really, really troubling you. Don't just say it till the end and say it as you're leaving. Um, if you think you'll struggle to remember what's discussed, and take a pen or paper, um, or you could take a friend or a relative and they can help you. Um, more top tips. So take a list of the medications that you're actually taking. Um, if it's too difficult to write a list, just take the boxes. Um, what you shouldn't take is a bag of tablets or try not to talk about tablets in how they look. So if you went and said, I take the blue one on the morning and the red one on the night, that really doesn't help the clinicians. They're not actually sure it could be anything really. So yes, they will have a list of your medications on the computer screen, but quite often people don't take what they the doctor thinks they're taking. Um, you might have had an appointment um, two weeks ago in the hospital where your tablets were changed and it hasn't been changed at the GP practice yet. So it's really important that you tell the doctor or the clinician what medication you are actually taking, even things that you buy over the counter, because that can really influence um, what's happening with your lower limb and then um, what they might do next. So don't don't assume that the doctors know the medication you're taking. They know the medication they last prescribed, but they don't know what you're actually putting into your mouth. So please tell them. If you have taken painkillers before your appointment, tell them. So if you've taken loads of painkillers, um, they might not get the accurate picture of what the problem is when they see you, because you might walk in quite nicely, but at home you really struggle. So if you've taken painkillers, please do tell them. Uh, a problem that's quite common for GP practices is that the contact numbers that they have for people aren't accurate or aren't up to date. So you could ring in, you've been through three hours with the receptionist, it gets to a clinician and they want to ring you back and discuss the problem and they don't have the right number for you. It's just simple things like that. Um, just make sure that the right numbers, uh, your number at the GP practice on your record is the correct number. Um, another thing that would really streamline things, if you do prefer a friend or a relative to speak to clinicians on your behalf, then make sure you've spoken to the practice in advance to let them know of that. Um, a clinician can't just discuss personal health and medical issues with a person on the phone when you've just that day. You can't just say, can you ring my uh, sister or can you ring my brother? Um, we need that needs all arranging in advance just for purposes of confidentiality. It needs to be quite a formal process to make sure that they know that you've given permission for them to speak to other people about your um, health and well-being. So they're just general top tips about appointments per se. But thinking about your leg when you get there with your appointment, it's a, probably a good idea to write these things down so that you can structure what you say. Um, if I went into appointments, especially those early days when the kids were small and my head was all over the place and I couldn't remember why I was there nearly, I'd go in and I'd just start rambling. But if you go in with a list and say, right, I'm here because my leg or my ulcer or my edema or my foot ulcer. So how did it start? Did you knock it? Did it start because it was really itchy and you scratched and now there's a wound? Did this wound just appear? Um, uh, has it got bigger or has it got smaller? If you've got all these things written down, you won't forget to say them. Um, is it painful? Again, back to that pain of what makes it better or worse. And how much leaking is coming out of the wound, um, if there is any leaking? So um, if you're having to change dressings, then let them know how often you're having to do this and how much leaking there is. Um, I put in capital letters in bold because it's so, so important. If you have a wound on your foot and you are diabetic, please make sure that at every step of this process, you tell the receptionist, the nurse, the doctor, whichever clinician you see, I am diabetic because you need referring to a specialist service for diabetic foot wounds. So how much will your doctor or nurse or clinician, any that could be a paramedic, anybody within primary care, 
know about lower limb problems. Now, this varies enormously between clinicians. Some GP practices have excellent wound care clinicians. They have links to leg clubs, local leg ulcer clinics. Um, they refer often into specialist services. Other practices might not have these services locally, or if they do, they might not know about them. Um, and other practices might not have as much knowledge about lower limb care. They might be more expert in other areas of medicine and healthcare. If it's the case where your practice is the practice where they don't have much knowledge about lower limb care, ask to be referred to a specialist service. If you're not being offered an assessment, it could be that the nurse isn't trained in lower limb assessment. Um, if that's the case, just ask to be referred to a specialist service. So these are just some examples of some referrals to specialist services that you might need. Diabetic foot ulcers must be referred to a diabetic foot clinic. Um, non -diabetic, that is regardless of the knowledge and skills within the practice and local services, you have to be seen by a diabetic foot team. Non-diabetic foot ulcers, so if you've got neuropathy and these are not, or if you've got, sorry, if you've got neuropathy, so if you've got a loss of sensation in your feet, or if you've got a wound on your foot, but your sensation is normal, that isn't improving, you'll need referring to podiatry. So podiatry are the experts for foot ulcers. With leg ulcers, if there's no local nurses trained in leg ulcer management, ask to be referred to a tissue viability team. So that's a team that I work in, for example, where there's wound specialist nurses, or ask to be referred to your local vascular team. Each area, depending where you live, it might involve quite a drive if you live in a rural area, but vascular specialist teams um, are available to accept leg ulcer referrals. So if your GP practice doesn't have the knowledge and the skills to treat lower limb care and leg ulcers, ask to be referred on to a vascular team or a tissue viability nurse. If you've got long-standing leg swelling, um, ask if there's a lymphedema service that you can be referred to. Um, now, lymphedema services across the country can be patchy. Some areas have them, some areas don't. Um, some areas have quite strict referral criteria where they will um, accept some patient types of edema patients, but not others. So find out what's in your area. And if there isn't a lymphedema service, this is when you need to start being more proactive if you're able to. So if there isn't a lymphedema service in your area, that's not your GP's fault, but we need to do something about it. So as a, as a campaign, Legs Matter are trying to do something about improving services. But as an individual, you could write to your MP, you could write to the um, local commissioners, but the, the MP is a really good call. If there's no lymphedema services within your area, why not? This is a huge problem for people. So it's not, it's not a debate to have with your individual GP because they can't change it. But if you want to do something about it, and please do do something about it, write to your MP and escalate this problem so that they can influence local services. Um, if you've got new locals, new leg swelling, then your GP will need to assess you. And if an onward referral is necessary, they will decide that. This is because there's so many reasons for new leg swelling. It could be something quite acute and urgent that needs dealing with the same day. It could be something more chronic, and it could be related to the medication you're taking. Um, new leg swelling, there could be a lot of different causes, which is why you would need assessing by your GP or another experienced clinician. Um, so they will determine if onward referrals are necessary. New leg swelling is the kind of assessment that all GPs can do, so they will be able to assess that. So what information could you take with you? Um, you really, you've got a, usually a seven or a 10 minute at most appointment. So you can't turn up with a large document and ask them to read it. But what you could do is if you are do have access to the internet, you could look at the National Wound Care Strategy Lower Limb Recommendations. And right at the bottom of that document, there's this one page document. You probably can't read it on the screen, it's quite small. But it's the lower limb recommendations for clinical care. It's just one sheet of A4. It's easy to print off, easy to bring up online. Um, you could take this information with you and say, I know that this is what I need.
please can you refer me on? Do you have anyone in the practice that can help me with this? So if you can't get access to a clinician, even with your lovely description of what the problem is to the receptionist, if you still can't get access to clinical care, then you really do need to escalate your concerns to the practice manager if the, um, if the concern is about accessing care within the surgery. But if it's the lack of specialist services in your whole locality, you should be escalating your concerns to your MP. MPs are powerful people and they can really help to influence um, healthcare services, but people need to tell them they, they can't act on problems that they don't know is there. But I think it's really important to bear in mind that most GP practices are working under enormous demand. Um, on top of that, there's all the COVID vaccines, flu vaccines. So you, we will need to wait a long time on the phone. We know this. We need to be patient. But when we get there, we need to work with them so that we can get the best out of that precious appointment as soon as you get it. So I hope that's been helpful. And I'll go, let me see, I'll stop sharing. And I'll have a look, see if there's any questions. So my mother's had, there's a few questions here, that's great. Uh, my mother's had swollen legs for some time now and she's seen her GP several times. He says it's common in old age. She's late in her late seventies. He put her on water tablets, which haven't helped. It's really getting her down. What do you suggest she or we do? Okay, so this is quite a common um, question. I'll be honest, we get this asked a lot. So it's highly likely that your mum needs some compression hosiery to support her legs. Um, water tablets often don't help if it's um, if your mum has chronic edema or lymphedema then it's unlikely that water tablets will help because it's a different kind of swelling. Um, so I would suggest you, what your mum needs is an assessment for some compression, compression hosiery. You could buy some mild compression support from a pharmacist and see if that helps, see if she's comfortable. Um, it's really important that um, the fit is really good for your mum. You could go to a pharmacy and they could measure your mum's legs if she can get out I'm not sure how mobile she is um but a community pharmacist could measure mum's legs and give her some gentle support just to see if that helps if not she might need a some stronger compression so just ask for an appointment with the nurse to see if they could assess her for some compression hosiery but the community pharmacy can help you with some mild hosiery in the um in the interim um I hope that helps I'm just reading some more questions. Do you think if I take some of the advice sheets from Legs Matter to show them my GP or nurse would be okay with that? I don't want to feel as if I'm telling them what to do. That is such a good question. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine last night who's a GP about this because what I didn't want it to be was a GP bashing session. Um, and she was really anxious that it wouldn't become that as well. Um, because she's a fabulous, lovely, engaged GP who is working so hard um, under enormous pressure. Um, so there's a fine line. I think it's how you approach it. Um, yes, I'd take some advice sheets some legs matter. Just take one. Just take the one that's pertinent to you. Just um, perhaps the National Wound Care Strategy Sheet that I showed you there, you could take that because it does um, help. It points out things that need urgent care. And if it's not urgent, it points, it says what should happen next. But it's all about how you approach it. So if this is your first appointment with your GP, I really wouldn't walk in and go, this is what I want and I want it now. It's about, you could say, I'm not sure how much you know about leg ulcers. I thought this might help because I've been looking into what I need. Um, diagnosing on the internet, as fabulous as our website is, I know I'm biased, but it is, um, diagnosing things on the self-diagnosis via the internet is never a good idea so it's your you've been educating yourself as to what your problem might be so it's about how you frame that conversation but I'm sure that any um, GP or nurse would be perfectly okay if you think say I've been looking on this website I think this might be the problem um, is this something you can deal with in the practice or do I need a referral I think a lot of this is about how you approach it um, but yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um, 
I'm worried that if I escalate to my MP, I will be labelled a difficult patient. No, 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 please don't worry about things like that. Um, usually those kind of things are confidential anyway. So if you were to write to UMP, you could say in your letter that you, you would rather your name be kept out of it. It's so important that people do this. It's so important that people write to the MPs if there is no lymphedema services locally or if um, they're not getting good care from their GP practice after many, many attempts. Um, it's really important that you do it. So please don't worry about being labelled as a difficult patient. Um, I can understand why you'd be concerned about that, but your, your name doesn't have to be involved. You're just a patient. You're, any MP can keep a patient's name out of any of these queries. Um, any more? What can I do to maintain healthy legs, legs or feet so I don't get any problems? Brilliant. There's nothing better than not needing a GP appointment at all. So there's loads of things we can all do. Um, a lot of it is the usual healthy lifestyle advice. So we need to use our legs. We, if we can't walk so much, um, chair exercises. And um, there's been loads of sessions this week about how to get moving. There's one this afternoon, actually, about getting fit after 50 from memory. I hope there is. Um, so walk when you are sitting down, legs up. Keep an eye. And there's been sessions this week about checking your legs and feet for early signs of problems. Um, it's really important that we take steps ourselves and we take responsibility for our own leg health. And we do walk and we do eat well. And if we need to, we do lose weight. Um, it's a normal health messages, but it can have a huge impact on your lower limbs. But um, yeah, it's really, that's just a really good question. And it is always better to not need the GP at all. So that's great, thank you. Uh, what training do GPs have on wounds and swollen legs? Does more need to be done? Can Legs Matter help with this? I hope Legs Matter can help with this. Um, the training that GPs do, uh, it's long and it's complex. Bearing in mind, GPs need to know something about everything. Um, and the world of particularly leg ulcers, really, is more tends to be more a nursing domain. So GPs are perfectly placed to assess more acute conditions, acute leg swelling, um, sudden pain in legs, um, like assessing for if you might have a DVT, for example, those kind of acute leg problems. So as to what the specific training they get, I'm not sure. I know I've delivered training myself for um, trainee GPs on lower leg care, <coughs> excuse me, because they acknowledged that they wanted to know more about venous disease and about lower limbs. So it's how much is in their curriculum? I don't know. Um, but I know that there is um, training available and GPs can do extra training. It's just, I think it is something that Legs Matter can help with. There's so many, every time we have a conversation, we think about something else and we all get excited about what we need to be doing. But um, it, it, it is on the agenda. But um, whether legs matter is big enough to influence GP curriculums, we'll see. It's certainly something we can work towards. We're an ambitious bunch. Um, so my GP service wants us to see a nurse practitioner rather than a doctor. Is this appropriate? Absolutely, yes. So nurse practitioners are exper extremely experienced clinicians. They have gone through um, additional training, advanced nurse practitioner training, they will be able to prescribe. Um, they will hopefully have had lower limb training, so they'll be able to assess for uh, venous disease, arterial disease. So seeing a nurse practitioner rather than a doctor is entirely appropriate. And when you are with the nurse practitioner, if he or she feels that there is something more acute, they will discuss with the doctor. So if you are offered a, an appointment with a nurse practitioner, the answer is yes, please. Um, you don't necessarily have to see a GP. Okay. Oh, really helpful. Thank you. That's nice. Thank you. Um, I'll just have a look in the Q and A. Um, I've done that one, man. That one. Oh, I think I've done them all. Have I? I think I've covered all the questions. I hope it's been helpful.
Let me see in the chat, there's some more. It's great to have tips of what to say, but it's a lot to be able to get the narrative right. There's so many barriers to get through. The whole system privileges certain people who can articulate their issues, take photos, etc. They shouldn't be normal and isn't acceptable. What are legs matter doing to advocate for changes in GP practices? Oh gosh, that's quite um that's quite a moving question, really. Let me go back to the beginning and take it one bit at a time. Um, it's a lot to be able to get the narrative right. You're right, it is a lot to get the narrative right. I think to help you, if you struggle with communicating, um, if you struggle on the phone, um, is it possible to either find somebody to help you? Could you email the practice instead and explain that you have difficulty um, speaking over the phone? I had a patient a few years ago where um, she couldn't she couldn't communicate on the phone she found it really difficult so every communication between me and her or her and her GP was all via email um, and that's just how she preferred to communicate so some people could do that I understand the issue of smartphones and taking pictures to um, some people is just not an option but is there somebody who can help you um, is there somebody who can sit with you and plan this phone call because these appointments are so precious it's worth putting the time into plan it it's not a quick phone call to the gp it's a precious consultation where you need to plan you need to think what why am i ringing what are the problems what am i feeling and just think about it more before you ring um i appreciate not everyone's able to do that um not everyone might have family or friends who could help them but is there anyone in your local community, if you're that isolated, try and reach out to people in the local area, neighbourhood schemes, um, elderly action groups, if you are elderly. So there's lots of fabulous people in local communities who could help you with this and help you get the most out of your consultation. Um, as opposed to the last um, point, what are legs matter doing to advocate for changes in GP practice? Oh gosh, we've got, we know we've got a lot of work to do. Um, we try to prioritise and we try to take one thing at a time. So our latest um, campaign, we've just released a document which is available online, all about campaigning for change in how these services are commissioned in the first place. And primary care comes into that. So yes, it is most definitely on our agenda. And yes, primary care and working better working within GP practices is certainly on that agenda and hopefully as the as we look at the bigger picture of how lower limb care is structured and funded across the health system that GP practices will certainly be part of that. I hope that answers that question but um, yeah I do understand some people have an awful lot of trouble communicating sometimes. Any more questions? I don't think so. Well, I hope that's been helpful. Um, again, any more information, you can access our website. There'll be loads of sessions for the rest of the day, um, which would help um, inform you, empower you even more about managing your lower leg problems. So, yeah, have a look at the rest of the sessions for the day. And thank you for listening. Bye.